Welcome to this video on how to simplify higher roots, numbers, and variables. Let's begin. Example 1 says, what is the third root of x to the 14th? Okay, so I'm going to show you two different ways of doing this. The one is more cumbersome. So if I have x to the 14th power, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 x's. Okay, and I'm taking the third root. So the, if I'm taking the third root, that means that I'm looking for sets of three x's. So here's one set, two sets, three sets, and four sets. So just like square roots, right, when I take the cubed root, um, only one of these three guys escapes. Okay, so I'm going to have one, two, three, four x's on the outside, and then what's left over under the radical? Well, I still have the cube root of x times x, or x squared. I can rewrite x times x times x times x as x to the fourth. So my final answer is x to the fourth times the cubed root of x squared. That would be my final answer. Now you can already see how this method is becoming cumbersome because, um, you know, when I have to write out 14 x's, it's a lot, okay? So I recommend, you know, using that maybe once or twice to help you understand what we're doing and why we're doing. But then we really want to graduate to this other method where we divide 14 by 3. So 3 goes into 14, 12, uh, sorry, see, 3 goes into 14 four times, 3 times 4 is 12. 12 minus, sorry, 14 minus 12 is 2. There's 2 left over. So remember, when we do this, when we do this division, um, the 4 is the exponent on the outside, and 2 is the exponent on the inside. So in other words, I can rewrite the cube root of x to the 14th power as x to the 4th times the cube root of x squared. Okay, so again, hopefully you can see this 4 goes right here, okay, and this 2 goes right there. All right, let's do another example. So this one's interesting. Um, first of all, we have a number on the outside. We have 5, and we also have numbers as well as variables on the inside. So let's rewrite this, first of all, as 5 times the cubed root of 54 times the cubed root of x to the seventh times the cubed root of y to the twelfth. Okay? So writing things out this way is going to help us kind of break this problem down into smaller bits. Okay? So let's, let's start with the cubed root of 54. So you can do this one of two ways. You can do a prime factorization method, right? So we could do 54 is 9 times 6, 9 is 3 times 3, 6 is 3 times 2. So the prime factorization of 54 is 3 times 3 times 3 times 2. So if I want to take the cubed root of this, then remember what I'm looking for is I'm looking for sets of 3. So I have one set of 3. I have a set of 3 threes. And remember when I take the cubed root, only one of those, uh, one of that set escapes. So I have 3 times the cubed root of 2. Okay, another equally valid thing to do is if you know your um, perfect cubes, you can see that 3 to the third power is 27. So another thing I could do, if I don't like that method, if I don't want to do that, I could rewrite uh, the cubed root of 54 as the cubed root of 27 times 2, okay? And then I would rewrite this as the cubed root of 27 times the cubed root of 2. And um, the, the cubed root of 27 is 3, as you can see, so this would still give me 3 times the cubed root of 2. Okay, so you can use either method. Um, it's up to you. So let's go ahead and um, fill this out. So we have 5 times 3 times the cubed root of, two of, yeah, sorry, the cubed root of 2. All right, so far so good. So now, do, now what should we do? Well, now we need to find um, the cubed root of x to the 7th and the cubed root of y to the 12th. So I'm going to erase this down here so I have more room. Um, if you're still copying, you can feel free to, to pause the video. Okay, so let's find the cubed root of x to the 7th. So we need to do 7 divided by 3. 
3 goes into 7 two times. 2 times 3 is 6, so 7 minus 6 is 1. So we have 2 remainder 1. Okay. Um, while we're here, let's go ahead and do y to the 12th, uh, the cube root of y to the 12th. So 12 divided by 3 is 4. It goes in evenly, so we have a remainder of 0. So what does this mean? Well, that means that an x squared can escape the radical, and it means that there's still 1x, or x to the first power, under the radical. Okay, over here, y to the fourth power escapes, and there's nothing left under the radical. So you might notice this isn't exactly the most elegant or beautiful solution, because we have a cube root here and a cube root here. Notice that all of these terms are connected via multiplication, so I can rewrite that. So let's rewrite all of the terms that are not under a radical first. So I have 5 times 3 times x squared times y to the fourth. Then I have the cubed root of 2 times the cubed root of x. All right, well, what can we do now? Well, 5 times 3 is 15, so I can rewrite this as 15x squared y to the fourth. I can then combine 2 and x under the same radical, so then I have times the cubed root of 2x. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is my final answer. All right, this time we have um, the fourth root of 162. So you have two options, right? You could memorize all of your perfect fourth powers. Um, I think that's a bit much. Even as a teacher, I've never really t troubled myself to do that. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to do a prime factorization. So I'm noting that 162 is an even number, so that's 2 times 81. So 162 is 2 times 81, so then what should we do? Well, 81 is 9 times 9, 9 is 3 times 3, and 9 is 3 times 3. So the fourth root of 162 becomes the fourth root of 2 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. So remember, with the fourth root, I'm looking for sets of four things. So I have a set of four threes, so they escape, except for only one makes it out alive. So I have three times the fourth root of two, and that's my final answer. All right, let's look and think about negative numbers. So if I have the square root of negative 16, remember, right now, we're saying that there is no real solution. So I can't um, do that. But what if I have an odd root? What if I have the third root of negative 27? Well, let's think about this. Negative 27 is equal to negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3, isn't it? So we could say that the third root of negative 27 is just negative 3. Okay? So there is a solution here because this is an odd root. Okay. What about the fourth root of negative 81? So again, we can't take the, four, uh, the fourth root of an even number, so there is no solution. We can't do that. What about the fifth root of negative 32? Well, negative 32 is equal to negative 2 times itself 5 times. So we can say that the fifth root of negative 32 is equal to negative 2. So there is an answer here. So let's see if we can find the pattern. In general, even roots, so 2, the square root, the fourth root, the sixth root, so on and so forth, do not have real solutions, while odd roots of negative numbers do have real solutions. Okay. Um, I should have written of negative numbers here. Okay, and while odd roots of negative So let's look at this last example here. Or actually, I think there's one more example after this. Um, so we have the fifth root of 32x to the 25th, y to the 17th, z to the third. Okay? So again, there's lots of different ways to think about this. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a prime factorization of 32. So I see it's an even number, so it's 2 times 16. 16 is 2 times 8. 8 is 2 times 4. 4 is 2 times 2. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2s. So when I try to take the fifth root of 32, I'm really taking the fifth root of 2 times itself, 
five times. So it's going to be simply that we have one group of five, and of course one, two escapes, so the fifth root of 32 is just two. So we have the fifth root of 32 times the fifth root of x to the 25th times the fifth root of y to the 17th times the fifth root of z to the third. Okay, so we already said that this is 2. Okay, then we're going to have 25 divided by 5, which is 5 remainder 0. We're going to have 17 divided by 5, which is 3 remainder 2. And then we're going to have 3 over 5, which is 0 remainder 3. Okay, so remember the first number is the exponent on the outside. So the fifth root of x to the 25th is just x to the fifth. The fifth root of y to the 17th is y to the third times the fifth root of y squared. And last but not least, um, nothing escapes here with the fifth root of z to the third, so we just rewrite it as fifth root of z to the third. Okay, so now what should we do? Um, we have this expression. Let's see if we can clean it up a little bit before we write um, our final answer. So we have 2x to the fifth, y to the third, times the fifth root, and we can put all of that under one radical, the fifth root of y squared z to the third power. Okay, so this right here is our final answer. Um, I try to always leave a space here, okay, um, so that it's clear that this 5 belongs to the radical and is not an exponent for what's in front of it. Okay, so this is the fifth root. All right, example five. Um, so we have the fi five times the cubed root of 54 x to the seventh, y to the twelfth. So again, I'm going to start by doing a prime factorization of 54. Oops, sorry. Two times three, three times three. So the cubed root of 54 is the cubed root of two times three times three times three. Okay, I have a set of three, one set of threes. So the 3 comes out, so I have 3 times the cubed root of 2, okay? So I'm going to have 5 times the cubed root of 54 times the cubed root of x to the 7th times the cubed root of y to the 12th power, okay? So we already did the cubed root of 54. We said that that is 3 times the cubed root of 2. Let me rewrite that. Okay, so then we do our little dividing thing. 7 divided by 3 is 2. 3 times 2 is 6, so we have 2 remainder 1. Okay, here 12 divided by 3 is 4 remainder 0. Okay, so this is going to become x squared times the cubed root of x to the first power, or just x. This is going to just be y to the fourth power. So this is our answer, but we need to clean it up a little bit before we... Um, write it or circle it as our final answer. So let's see if we can figure out how to do that. So I'm going to rewrite all of the terms that are not under a radical. So 5 times 3 times x squared times y to the fourth. Okay, And then everything um, that's under the radical, I'm going to put under a single radical here. So I'm going to have the cubed root of 2x. Okay, So let's clean this up a little bit more. 5 times 3 is 15, so we have 15x squared y to the fourth times, again I'm going to leave a little bit of a space here so that it's obvious that the 3 is indicating the third root and it is not an exponent that's attached to one of the other terms. So our final answer is 15x squared y to the fourth times the cubed root of 2x.